Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you to all of our witnesses as well uh, today and for the ongoing work. I do have some questions about the collaboration you all were discussing at this point. Uh, when I was visiting with some of the folks at our southern border several months ago, uh, there's some of our border stations uh, that were trying to get counter UAS uh, equipment up and running and operable. Uh, in one of our areas along the border, uh, we had over 10,000 incursions uh, in just that area with uh, UAS coming across the border from Mexico into the United States, and uh, they were very eager to be able to get that. When I asked what's the issue the equipment was there the people were there they were waiting on authorization and there was an ongoing dialogue between dhs and faa to be able to discuss how we're going to get this up so literally the equipment the people the need everything was there so my question is about this collaboration how long does it take in this particular instance uh, we had a, a situation where that same equipment along the border was being used in a different region of the border and had been used for a while, but in this particular region it took months to actually get counter UAS equipment up and working in that area. How do we speed up this process? Where is the slowdown? Senator, um, as uh, noted earlier, I share your concern about uh, the uh, malicious uh, drone threat at the southwest border my colleague from FAA in a moment. As um, you know, sir, uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security has uh, authorized three areas of operations along the southwest border as covered facilities or assets. So we have three up and running, if you will. There are four additional AORs that are pending. We have taken significant steps internally to um, make the process internally more efficient between CBP and the Program Management Office, which is part of, part of my team. In addition, we have started doing safely concurrent processes with FAA such that this can move as expeditiously as possible. There are four areas of operations. I don't know if it's one of the ones that you visited. Mm -hmm. Four areas of operations still pending. I will tell you it is a priority for me. It is a priority for the secretary to get these authorized as quickly as possible. So what is the holdup? Because this, this is months when that same technology is used in other places along the border. Where is the spot where it's getting stuck? So um, I'll turn to my colleague from FAA in a moment, but as these AORs are uh, in the process of being offer, authorized, there is uh, a lot of coordination with the FAA, and each part, each covered facility or asset, sir, is different. So there are different complexities in each area of operations. Now, again, we are committed to doing this quickly. The threat is, is significant but each area of operations is different, which is why we coordinate with the FAA on- Right, I get it. We're still back to the same spot. Defining quickly, uh, this seems to be defining quickly along geologic time rather than clock time on it, because it's, it's, it's taking months in process, and when I've interacted with the secretary, uh, it would be it's on FAA's desk, and then I talk to FAA, and they'd say, no, it's on the secretary's desk, and there, there's, it just seems to be getting lost. What I'm yes. trying to figure out is how to get this unstuck. So, um, I can't go into further details in this hearing except on one point. Okay. On one of the AORs, sir, it's a matter of just uh, a few weeks um, at, at a maximum. The others are a little bit more complex, and I'd be glad to speak with you in a closed session just okay. more specifically about what that looks like, but we are committed to doing this with urgency and with care. Great, thanks. How long does it take to be able to get one of these coordinations done with FAA uh, to be able to look at an existing technology that's out there in a new geographic region? So it, it, it varies based on the technology and the location and the complexity of the request that we receive. So in some cases, it can take just a matter of days to issue a TFR, but then others it does take longer uh, depending on what the actual area is and other TFRs that may be in the area. And right, can other can you define longer for me, just so I get it? Because a matter of days I can get, what does longer mean? So I'm not in the area of issuing of the TFRs, so it can it, it varies. So like we are working with our security partners now on, on also other areas of the country where they're trying to get TFRs. So it can vary as long as we have the information, working closely with our security partners in getting that. Um, I can't give you a definitive how long uh, because the operations and all vary. Here, here's my challenge on this, and, and I'll just take one specific region in the southwest border. When I go there and I see the people, I see the equipment, everyone's trained, everyone's ready to go, and they're waiting on a piece of paper to be signed somewhere in Washington. I get on the phone and start calling around and saying, where is this? How do we get this unstuck? Because they're dealing with, literally at that point, thousands of UAS coming across uh, from Mexico carrying narcotics, doing surveillance. We have the technology sitting there. I'm just trying to figure out how do we get this unstuck? Because it's on someone's desk moving, doing something. 
if there is a need to assist in process, this committee is very engaged to be able to help get processes unstuck, but we're trying to figure out why it's, un why it's still stuck. Uh, Senator, I um, try to be in the business of unsticking things as well. And I will tell you that um, for the one that I mentioned that is forthcoming in just uh, a, a small number of weeks, we are, what we're waiting for in that particular context and, and in others is to ensure that this equipment can be safely used and operated in that airspace. So I'm um, happy to follow up with more details in a closed session, but we, again, deeply committed to ensuring that this first AOR happens in a very small number of weeks and that the other additional AORs that, again, are just more complex yeah. from an airspace perspective are unstuck quickly as well. Yeah. How long has that one been pending? You said the one that's going to get unstuck in weeks. How long is, is it? when it first started? I don't have the exact date in front of me, sir, but it's been, um, when you say first started, it's, it, it's, um, it's been uh, just a few weeks since we could move to this next stage of basically um, looking at this particular airspace and the complexities there and ensuring that the equipment could be safely used. But I can get you a more specific answer. That'd be helpful. Writing. L let me ask the same question when we deal with the Bureau of Prisons and how this is managed. Obviously, a huge issue with cell phones being snuck in, uh, individuals that are actually operating their gangs and criminal activity, uh, stalking uh, people that they had threatened uh, outside of that facility from inside the facility, uh, bringing narcotics in. This has been a big issue for our Bureau of Prisons. Uh, what would slow us down now? Those are fixed locations, most of them in remote areas. What would be the challenge of trying to get this counter UAS across all of our Bureau of Prison facilities, starting with the most remote. Why isn't that already happening? So we're working on that. We've, we've deployed technology at a number of prisons. I don't, I know it's several, and there's, I think there's another 20 that are be, gonna be coming on board. It's really just a question of getting people trained, getting the technology, uh, getting, working, working with the FAA on the, on the TFRs and so forth. So look, I, I understand your impatience and uh, share it. Um, so we wanna do this because it is a huge problem. The, yeah. the, uh, so I share your view and we were working with BOP, which is definitely a, a, a concerned about this issue. We just had charges this past week in a prison in Texas um, where uh, people were smuggling in uh, contraband into the prison and that's, it's not the first one, there's others. Uh, so I share your concern and BOP is ramping up. Okay, that, that's helpful. It, I, I would say good, except that this is something we've talked about often around this dais to try to say what, what, what is the slowdown. We're always trying to figure out what is the issue because we'll allocate funds, we'll do the studies, we'll do the pilots, we'll approve all the process, and it seems to be years to actually get to execution on something that should be pretty straightforward, especially a Bureau of Prisons area that's very remote, uh, that we're not dealing with the complexities of being in a city, uh, that uh, th this one shouldn't just be as hard as it seems to be. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you.